FGC Hollywood. Stay classy. I think, did I talk to you about this? Or maybe it was my roommate. I remember we had this conversation and we were talking about the study on wealth and what it does to the mental state. And they said if it's very difficult to quantify happiness because it's not something you can put in a jar and read the numbers. Oh, yeah. But with the studies that they did, they found that whatever their definition of happiness was, it was quantified in the way that if you made $75,000 a year compared to a million dollars a year, the variation of how happy you are actually isn't that different compared to somebody who's making 20000 to 50000 Like, that's a way bigger gap. So, like, the, the difference between having a lot of money to living comfortably, the happiness mm -hmm. gauge doesn't really move too much. I definitely have read about stuff like that where it's like at a certain point, you really don't need any more money because at 70, 75 grand, man, unless you're living like really high up there, I mean, that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to FGC Hollywood episode 24. My name is Max Bleiser. I'm joined as always by my co-host Pringle the One. Pringle, my friend, how are you doing on this fine Saturday evening for me? I think it's a little closer to the afternoon for you. Yeah, it's pretty good, man. There was actually some sun in the past two days, man. It's just been nothing but nonstop rain over here. <laughs> it's been cold here too. Yeah, yeah, exactly, man. I'm over here. like It almost feels like the winters are getting longer. <laughs> I know. Where's my spring, man? I know, man. Yeah, exactly, man. Spring's supposed to hit after uh, the 20th of this month, so we'll see if it actually hits. You know what I mean? It's like it's spring, and then the clump of snow just drops on your head. Yeah. Uh, Guilty Gear. So uh, I don't know how many people... Nobody has said anything, so I'm assuming nobody has really cared that much. Uh, <laughs> I... I the last, I think, four or five podcasts, I took away game sales out of the podcast just for time constraints. But, uh, I mean, we said, hey, if anything does pop up, we'll still make sure to put it out there. So Fanatical is having a, a sale for Guilty Gear this weekend. Uh, I think you'll, by the time this podcast is out, you'll still have about a couple days to go buy Plus R and Exert and all those games are on there. So if you're interested in Guilty Gear, go check out Fanatical.com and... That leads us to Hollywood Question of the Week, which actually comes by way of Jam on Patreon. And he asks, to what extent do you guys think nostalgia and brand slash developer loyalty affects your impressions of new games in a franchise? Recent examples include Guilty Gear Strive, King of Fighters 15, but might come up again with a new Virtua Fighter, God forbid, a new Darkstalkers. I don't know. I think it does affect people pretty hard. Uh... Especially the nostalgia. I feel like it's the case with Street Fighter. Every time a new Street Fighter drops, it's like people just, you know, they round and get it. And Street Fighter Five was a perfect example of something not even finished and everybody got it. So <laughs> so I, I think there is uh, some definite effect how those things play into someone getting into a game of the franchise. But like, I, I don't think I'd be able to just buy a game right when I see it just because it's like, it's another part of the franchise. It's just too hard for me to do that now because I know too much. Like maybe if I knew a lot less and I had a lot of like F you money, <laughs> yeah. right? I would be able to just buy it, but I just can't. It's, it's, I'm going to just get 60. I was like, it's nah, it's not worth 60. Like in Stripe's case, it's not worth 60, man. I, I can't, I can't like Rev2 is $8 always on sale. Uh, that thing's like always on sale. And it's like for me to just spend a whole $60 on Strive with what I've played, and what I've seen, and like a part of me is also like, it's not even so much about the gameplay, but I feel like the overall package is just not $60 worth enough. But I know back then, you know, people probably wouldn't care. They'd just be buying, like, they'd be like, whatever, you know, it's got a, it's got an arcade, it's got a versus, that's all I need. It's like, nah, that's just not, it's not enough for me, man. <laughs> yeah. well, I think uh, the gaming landscape today is vastly different, right? Because mm -hmm. back then, the releases didn't happen as often like releases happen every week in in today's landscape where yeah. there's competition constantly so if you pass on strive this week something else might not be a fighting game but something else will show up on the games chart next week and you can you know look through that and be like hey that could be worth my money so there's a lot more parity in the market for consumers i agree yeah. with you with uh i wouldn't say capcom specifically but i would say brand loyalty really affects street fighter because you did see that with marvel which is capcom 
-hmm. When MVCI came out, for example, you had some people flock to MVCI because it was new. It was exciting. Mm -hmm. That's a new Marvel. And then they figured out as like, this is not the Marvel that I want. Everybody went mm -hmm. to Marvel versus Capcom 3, right? Whereas mm -hmm. with Street Fighter V, when that came out in 2016, I found that a lot of Street Fighter people, even though it was almost as bad as Marvel as it came out, if not on par, th there was a lot of denial being like, oh, this is not as bad as you think it is. I think mm -hmm. they just didn't really want to, to leave Street Fighter. And I think that has a lot to do with brand loyalty. So on the Capcom side, I think Street Fighter is way more of a, a culprit in this thing than than any other fighting game property that they have. And you just reminded me about like how when MVCI was dropping, everybody was like, this is it. This is it. Marvel, baby. And then you got people like even Maximilian selling like, Yo, y'all need to buy the the the, the, the Get those eggs, bro. This, this dude was selling Easter eggs, and I was like, <laughs> "Yo, Max, come on, man!" And he was out here promoting that stuff to people to buy the collector's pack. Yo, yo, check it out, man! I got this thing, eggs, like eggs, dude. They didn't even care enough. In the end of the day, man, the fan base is really what's gonna like push these games further. They're gonna be the ones playing the game two, three years from now, and yep. still talking about the game. They're going to be the ones promoting it free in a way by playing it and showing high level play. Like it's the case of Guilty Gear Strive. And that's why I, I, I kind of get like salted a little bit for Strive because it's like they are trying to appeal to those casual guys. But in reality, they don't care about the game. And the, the people that really care about Guilty Gear are going to play it for years on end. And they're going to be the ones marketing it in a way from the TOs to the people playing it to the people talking about the game. And those are usually like strong, like players and fans i would even say that talk about the game even like years to come mm -hmm. but they have this weird thing with the casual type audience and then like and and going back to like mbci they did it too where like oh like the new p the players that have the loyalty they're like no nah, no nah, it's not that bad it's just different and it's like look at what happened to street fighter 5 man that game was not it was different all right Different and ass, you know what I mean? So it was like they were trying to protect garbage at the end of the day. It's like, this is my golden poop. It's just it's just a loyalty. Like, I don't want Capcom to be bad, you know what I'm saying? They make some pretty good games, but you just got to be real with it, man. It's trash, dude. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I don't want them to be bad. And the fact that they're appealing to people that don't even really care about their games, and they're just trying. You know what? It's almost, I also thought it's like, it's like they're trying to make a quick buck, but they're not thinking about the long game. You know, I was watching a video, and I'm not calling... A street fighter fans and players sociopaths but <laughs> i was watching a video about uh, the qualities of what makes a sociopath <laughs> and uh, one of them is manipulation and uh -huh. sociopaths are actually so good at manipulation is that they will form a narrative and they will try to extend that narrative to whoever they're mm -hmm. trying to convince and eventually the truth gets foggy in their own head and that becomes the actual narrative for them so they think they're telling the mm -hmm. truth when they're actually telling a lie that they fabricated but now that if you try to challenge them they're so adamant that where they're coming from is the place of righteousness and truth mm -hmm. that it almost puts a doubt into you so when you had the street fighter people saying oh no 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 you don't understand like street fighter is this and everybody mm -hmm. who was on the outside was like no street fighter is that and they they were they were almost convincing themselves in a truth that was false it was uh it's it's interesting like i uh -huh. it's almost you want something that you love to be so great you mm -hmm. decide to just not even acknowledge its fault and you you just reminded me so i'm watching death note <laughs> what death note of a girlfriend and it's basically the same concept man he's like this dude is a psychopath light is a psychopath He's saying he, he gets the death note and he's like, he's like, oh, so I keep killing. He keeps killing people that are criminals, mm -hmm. but he's playing God. And in yep. his head, he's like, this is a justified act. This is a justified act. But in reality, it's wrong. You're not supposed to play God. That's not who you are. And he knows this, but it's like, nah, 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 I'm in the right. I'm in the right. I'm in the right. So he just keeps killing people. <laughs> yep. And it's like, yeah, sure. He's killing like criminals, but like you can't just kill just because you can, man. That's not how that works, dude. Yeah, no, it's. It's not. Yeah, man, you could tell yourself a lie a thousand times. Sooner or later, it might become true just because you told yourself that. Story. In your head, yeah. I don't know. But yeah, TLDR, definitely. Brand loyalty affects impressions, especially early impressions of uh, returning mm -hmm. franchises. That's 
something we'll continue to see just because people love what they love. And when you decide to critique something that they love, it's almost a critique on who they are. So it's personal. Yeah. People take it really personal. Yeah, man. The Strive video, video basically, everybody took it personal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. It's like, yo, man, I, I, I tell it at the end. It's like, yo, if you have fun with your game, I'm glad you have fun with it. Nah, F you, Pringle. I, boomer. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that guy that Pagan put in Discord? He commented yeah. on that. Yeah, he commented on our video, and uh, Pagan found him on some other YouTube comment Ooh. calling other people boomers. I think that's the that's what that guy does. Yeah, he, goes I think online. That's what he, does. he calls people boomers. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him on Majid Obama's video, man, and I was like, "Yo, this dude really out here going around saying boomer." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's repping the the Zoomer. I mean, I respect I it. You know, represent your your team. <laughs> Right, <laughs> man, holding his flag everywhere. Yeah, he's carrying the torch. Mm -hmm. All right. So the first item of news is Super Saiyan Four Gogeta and Dragon Ball Fighters. So I we technically missed this last week, but uh, mm -hmm. it wasn't completely out, so I didn't want to say anything. So on March seventh, twenty twenty one, Bandai Namco released its final character trailer for Dragon Ball Z, or rather Dragon Ball Fighters Season Three Pass. That being Super Saiyan Four Gogeta. The trailer showcases Gogeta's normal, special, and super moves against various opponents before closing with his release date. Gogeta completes the Season 3 pass, joining Kefla, Ultra Instinct Goku, Master Roshi, and Super Baby Vegeta 2, and is currently playable in the game, either as a standalone purchase for $4.99 or bundled in the Season Pass for $19.99. So the reason why I added this here is because I saw some murmurings online and i'm not too i don't have my hands on the pulse of the dragon ball fighters community but from what i saw people were speculating that now that season or three pass is complete and this game is approaching i believe three years since its official launch they're saying uh, this might be it for dragon ball fighters and other people are saying well if you look at the roster and the trends of the roster season four pass actually seems appropriate but I don't even know who they would add in anymore. I think they have a lot of characters in that game. And the netcode, I don't know if you saw that narrative. After post, post the Strive beta, when mm -hmm. people started flocking back to their, to their games after the honeymoon period with Strive, people were saying, man, it's really hard coming back to Grand Blue Fantasy. It's really hard coming back to Dragon Ball Fighters <laughs> after playing the Strive beta because of how good the netcode was. So I don't know where Dragon Ball Fighters fits in this picture as far as 2022 is concerned, like I wonder if this is where it ends and now they're looking towards the future with Dragon Ball Fighters 2. I can never predict these things because I remember I thought season three for Tekken was the last thing and all of a sudden they hit us with season four. So who knows what they're thinking over there, Bandai Namco. Mm -hmm. But what do you think? You think this is it or you think this uh, this old car has a couple more miles left in it? When did it drop? Do you, do you happen to know off the top of your head? I think mid 2018 uh, actually january 2016 oh january okay yeah damn it's been that long man so over three years jesus christ yeah that i feel like they might just end up putting a making a new one sooner. It, it, it it's such a big hit that all they have to really do at this point is probably like tossing some rollback add like maybe a couple more characters so they're already huge roster mm. man they'd be good to go i think they're gonna try I'm, I'm also thinking they might try to squeeze as much as they can out of dragon ball fighters because what was it the steam charts that i saw recently man that there's like still two thousand people plus people playing this game on bad net code. i think it ranked ranked four right behind tekken 7 and street fighter 5 and mortal kombat i think it was. technically brawl hollow was number one but i don't know if you can really count that because we have to man they make in the bank man they were, <laughs> yeah that's true they, they, at this point they just they deserve it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but yeah dude like they're such big numbers on that game somehow i don't even know and it's crazy how people went from playing really good net code and they're like all right i'm gonna play garbage now like you know what i'm saying like it, it, that's how much they love their game they're willing enough to play bad net code and man i I played that game, like I said, like two times, like uh, two days at least. And I was just like, this Neko is not good, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think Dragon Ball Fighters, if if they do come out with a second game, which it does seem likely since the first one has done so well, mm -hmm. I, I do see them taking notes from what they did correct and in the first installment of this this game and keep on trucking with hopefully better netcode. Yeah, man, seriously. Yeah. yeah. Shout outs to the 
DPFC community, even though I've mm. pl- I have like I don't know thirty minutes lifetime played in that game. <laughs> Trunks is dope. super fun though. I had so much fun doing. Oh yeah, yeah. Trunks, Trunks is dope. Yeah, yeah, he's a he's a cool character. Yeah, the the combo the combo system in that game is is oh, it's easy, but it's fun. Like yeah, uh, like it's pressing buttons. You're pressing buttons, but it's pretty fun. All right, moving on. This one. Oh my God, Pringle! I was <laughs> I was betrayed. My my own co-host. <laughs> <laughs> what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> well I'll, I'll explain so this i call this the great hollywood divide featuring yuri sakazaki so on march 10th 2021 snk released its weekly king of fighters 15 trailer this time featuring legacy women's fighter team member yuri sakazaki so the art of fighting alum is showcased using her usual karate style on various opponents as well as a few of her returning specials and supers, which fans of the series have been all too accustomed to throughout the years of King of Fighters. Yuri's trailer does come by a bit of a surprise, as many were expecting the completion of the Fatal Fury team to be revealed this week with the Fatal Fury staple Terry Bogard. However, Terry's birthday is on March 15th, so we can assume that SNK is waiting for that day to introduce him to the game and join Joe Higashi and Andy Bogard as they make up the traditional team Fatal Fury. So... I'm assuming that's what's going to happen. We're recording this currently on March 13th. I don't know if he'll come out in two days. He might come out on Wednesday, which is probably more likely. That would be a week from the Yuri trailer. But uh, before we get to some of the notes here, oh my God, can you hear my roommate right now? He is raging playing League or whatever. I'm going to keep that in the podcast. (laughs) Yo, he should not play League. That game, I remember my boy played, my roommate played League too. And he was like, dude, I don't understand. We win and no one is happy. Everybody's just cursing out each other. I don't understand. Okay, so back to Yuri. So before I read all this stuff, we have the reason why I call it the Great Divide is because when this trailer dropped, oh boy. In Hollywood, we're all talking about it in the Discord. And it seemed like we had about, I don't know, close to like eight people in there talking about it. And it was split right down the middle. Half of us were like, what the hell is this? And half of us were like, this is amazing. (laughs) i believe and correct me if i'm wrong i believe this is the first time you and i were on opposite sides of one of these arguments normally we're on the same page so i felt i was like oh my god but i have i wrote a couple notes here so i want to grade yuri's trailer so i'll I'll give you a kind of a scenario so if if chizuru's trailer is an a and shune's trailer was an f what grade do you give yuri's trailer a plus, baby. Oh <laughs> I can't do this. I can't do that this. joint. That joint had the bongos playing. I felt that. I was like, Ay! I felt the, the 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 legacy in me. I felt my roots just come in as the trailer started, and then I saw some Yuri, and I was like, Yo, she got her hair is even braided. I was like, Hell yeah, man, let's get it. <laughs> and then the dude was like, Yuri Sakazaki. I was like, Oh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Nah, man. I, I liked it. I liked the trailer, man. I, I feel like there is one thing, and I'll leave it at the end. I, I did like the trailer. I actually liked the trailer, and maybe it's because I do like Yuri a bit, but I do like the trailer. Okay. So I will keep it at an A+, plus, a plus just to spite you. This is, <laughs> this is some blasphemy. <laughs> shouts out to In My Pants. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Pants. He, oh, uh, man. He, I remember he said, that's how it started. He said, uh, wow, this looks amazing. And then I typed <laughs> back. I was like, are you being sarcastic or are you serious? And he was like, what do you mean? <laughs> I was like, what? That man said I'm being serious. <laughs> so uh, I give this trailer a C minus. So I would, I would grade it above Shunei's trailer because I thought that was the worst trailer that they put out. Mm. This this trailer, I th- maybe it's a tad bit better than Andy's trailer, and uh, we'll we'll explain why. So here are my pros, and obviously I didn't have your pros at the time, so feel free to add them before we get to the cons. Mm. Um, my pros is I think the stage looks great. I think it's unique so far. It's something that I really liked with all these trailers. The stages have been pretty polished. I liked the mm-hmm. way they look, and they're all different. It's not you can't confuse at one stage to another. They all look different, so that's nice. Mm-hmm. One thing that I I did have a problem is the background characters, the models, 
And every KOF kind of has that where the models kind of are kind of going crazy and, you know, they're doing all these <laughs> things. I would like to see, because the models are a little more distinct in the background, you can kind of tell what they look like. They're not just pixels like older KOF games. So you can get a, get away with if they're a little blurry from far yeah. away. Here, there's a couple models in there that like, um, some of those animations look kind of weird. I would l- I mean, it's a little, little detail, but if they could polish those before release, that'd be a little nicer because even though it was only a trailer, I noticed that like the background people don't look nearly as nice as what's happening in the mm-hmm. foreground. That's the only little critique I had there. But the stage, I think, looks really good. The music ain't bad. I'm not as big of a fan of bongos as you are. I thought it was fine. Oh, I was man. Like, you, you didn't feel the bongos. I was like, oh. oh. No. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a Donkey Kong guy, so no. <laughs> Yo, I love this Donkey Kong. Yo, oh my God. You just reminded me. It does remind me of Donkey Kong. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. I mean, you know me. I like more rockish type themes so like that's why i really like the eno guilty gears drive theme because i was like yeah i can jam to this even without playing her like this is something i would just listen to so it's i don't think it's bad i don't think it's good so it's just kind of like right in the middle certain animations have been improved i think it was her level two where you saw like the background Mm -hmm. flash and that looked pretty neat so it looks like they're working on those that's improved that's a sign for um us being a little more encouraged Mm-hmm. You're, you mentioned it before. She has her braids back. And I'll cut off here. I'll let you give your pros before we get to the cons. Yo, so, like, what's funny is, like, I don't know what that move is called where she, like, kicks him in the air. It reminded me of Mortal Kombat, man. Like, the old ones. Where they'd be like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> And then it's just, like, one, like, two punches animated the same. But, like, mm, one yeah. after the other one. <laughs> so Yeah, it, it, King it, has it, too. It's called Surprise Rose. Yeah, yeah. So, it kind of reminded me of that. And I kind of liked it. Um... I liked how her intro was where she like she kind of comes in and starts doing the, the peace signs and stuff like that. So I really did like that. I like how they have it seems like they have improved some of the the fire. It's still look it's still looking a little bit like Nickelodeon slime out here, but you know <laughs> <laughs> they'll get there, you know. But I, I, I liked it. I, I watched it the first time I was like, oh that wasn't that bad. And then the second time I was like, you know, I like it. <laughs> I watched this trailer about 10 times just for <laughs> for reference <laughs> because i you start thought, picking at it more and more you start hating well, it more that's what happened <laughs> no 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 okay so i here's what was happening is on initial impression i was like i don't like it and then i watched <laughs> it again and i was like i still don't like it and then when you guys were talking about it, i was like wait a second am i missing something here like what is happening oh man so, so i kept watching it thinking okay maybe let me see what they were talking about let me see if i can locate it in the trailer and I was like, y'all are whack. <laughs> <laughs> you came to a conclusion. No, all you guys are wrong. <laughs> no. So let, let's talk about my cons a little bit. Okay. Just so people understand where I'm coming from. I don't think she looks good. God damn. That hurts me. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I don't think she looks good. Specifically her face. The face yeah. looks generic. And that's being mm-hmm. <laughs> really nice. The eyes specifically, in my opinion, look like those anime stickers that you get in like templates at like art shops or whatever. <laughs> I mean, you just slap them on and they look oh, man. they look stupid to me. Like they don't look <laughs> detailed to what she's supposed to look like. And I know it's a it's a matter of being subjective, right? Because personally, mm-hmm. I like the way my looks, even though we haven't gotten to my trailer. My has really sharp eyes. And even though it's not normally what my has... I like that her eyes are a little more defined and you, they have more character to them. Here, I'm sorry, but she her eyes specifically look like generic anime eyes that are just slapped on, like any random anime character. And I'm like, this looks stupid. And then in motion, it it just looks funky. Like her face looks bad, man. <laughs> like it doesn't yep. look good. So like I'm seeing it again. Yeah. Don't. So like in the beginning, I'm fine with her face and stuff like that. It doesn't look bad at all. I think it's like I can understand the generic and stuff like that. But like in motion and I think it's even even Andy suffers from it is like it's like everything looks a bit more blurred. Yeah. And a lot of you said, well, you know, uh, I, I don't see that at all. I think she looks great. I don't see her eyes being any different than normal. It's my personal preference. I think they look cheap. It, like they didn't put a lot of effort into making them you look unique. They look generic to me. And you know me, man. Like I, I talk about this every week. I want this game to succeed. I'm buying this game for sure. If it has rollback netcode, uh, I think this is 
I said I thought KOF 15 is going to be the best game of 2021. Hopefully, if it comes out this year. So you know where I'm coming with this game, but I also have to call a spade a spade. And <laughs> this, my friend, was a losing hand. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead. What You hater. You a hater. Everybody's a <laughs> hater. All y'all are haters. Hater, 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 haters. No, I'm just <laughs> It's me, <laughs> Zio, and I think even Org was on my side for a little bit. If you and, don't uh, agree with my opinion, all of you are my enemy right now. Correct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, nah, man. I mean, I feel <laughs> it, man. You're you're right. So, like, in reality, I like I liked it. Like, it was more than enough. But you're right about the glaring issues. Like, for instance, there's these weird cuts in the beginning, but then like halfway through with the supers and stuff, they stopped doing it or the special moves. Mm-hmm. They stopped doing it and they did cut the max mode. I didn't even think about that because I always forget about the max mode supers and stuff. And I I can agree with you with the uh, the eyes and stuff. And it's more glaring now when I see it again in motion where everything feels like like for some reason KO feels like it's like two generations behind, man. Like it's like we're in generation PS5, right? They're like in PS3 right now. <laughs> Damn, my roommate is still pissed, man. He must be losing really bad. <laughs> R.I.P., man. R.I.P. All right, one more news item for this week, and it has to do with uh, my current favorite game on the market is Dem's Fighting Herds. So on March 9th, 2021, Main 6 announced via Steam that Dem's Fighting Herds 2.0 patch finally has a release date and that it will be live to all players on March 25th. 2021. There are 15 pages of patch notes so far, but some of the biggest things to look forward to include a sweep of rebalancing and bug fixes for all characters, along with some universal system changes, new pixel lobby, hollowed grove, oleander's lobby, and new hats. Dude, my hat right now in the lobby is godlike. You have to check it out. <laughs> nice, nice, dude. I gotta stick with the fro, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that, that one's good too. Uh, new stage, hidden waterfall, new replay system, a first round of general menu remastering, and alongside the free 2.0 update, the game is also adding its first ever DLC fighter, Shanty the Goat. The Shanty DLC package will cost $4.99 with regional adjustments. So if you live in Europe, probably a little different. So I guess we'll go over what's in the DLC package itself. So it's going to be Shanty as a DLC a uh, playable character, the Capricorn, which is Shanty's stage, Shanty Pixel Lobby Avatar, and lastly, owners of the Shanty DLC will get access to Shanty's story mode chapter when it's released later, after the main story chapters are finished, which right now the estimated time of arrival for those are to be discovered. And finally, if you helped back Them's Fighting Herds in their stretch goal effort, Make sure to check your emails for a key for Shanty's DLC as those are supposed to make the rounds a few days before the update goes live. That's what I'm talking about. Dude, I was going to ask too, what, like, I, because I don't remember, I I didn't pay attention much to them fighters, but how did they get, like, how did the the game was back then? Like, it was a Indiegogo or like Kickstarter or something? It was, I don't think it was Kickstarter. I believe it was Indiegogo campaign. And it was it only started as an Indiegogo campaign after they got the season deceased from yeah. My Little Pony. Mm. And then so like they the initial game came out with just six characters. I don't even know if it had six. It might have had even oh, yeah. less than that, but it had the oh, actual okay. characters from the show. Ah, okay. And it was called Fighting is Magic instead of Them's Fighting Herds. So I get, so it did release like last year, right? Like it released released last year. Or... Yeah. So I know I know someone told me a bit right quick though. That's really dope that they're getting all of this stuff. Um, but I know someone told me that like they use a different method of creating their characters as opposed to like Skullgirls, where it's like everything's hand drawn with Skullgirls, but with um, them fighting her, it's something completely di- like well, not completely different, but it's a bit different. Do you happen to know what it is? So I saw, I believe it was you and Dark oh, really? talking yeah. in Discord, and he's an artist himself. Yeah, and he was going over the method. I didn't really understand it because I'm not an artist myself. But from what I understood yeah. from what he said, is that it's not entirely hand drawn from scratch. The yeah. way Skullgirls is, is they use a different method that's a little easier to make. So these characters. It could be the reason why Shanty isn't priced, you know, four hundred dollars yeah. like Annie or whatever. <laughs> yeah, so that's where I was gonna go down with this actually. So, because I was like, I was wondering, I was like, what? Because if they're gonna sell like Shanty at five, right, and that uh, Skullgirls got Annie at like ten dollars, 
I guess at, it also makes me wonder at what point when Skullgirl, if Skullgirls would have came out normally, you think they would have started selling characters in the beginning at ten dollars flat, man? Because it makes me wonder, like, because you already know I, I'm not really like ten dollars is still like a lot, and I don't think I don't know how I don't know how that really helps them in the long run with the, a, a a game that isn't that popular to sell something at such a higher price, but. The fact that Shanty is like five dollars is still pretty good, and I mean, like the whole two point up that being free is is really good. I, is there nowadays? Is there games out here making people pay for updates? Man, I don't think so. No, not for the balance changes themselves, but if you want the DLC, yeah. that's when you have to pay. Yeah, because I was I remember at one point I was wondering about that with like a Tekken Tekken Seven at one point I was like, Yo, am I gonna have to pay to get? the balance changes of the second game because when you think about it that's how they kind of were doing it before where they were reselling the same game um and it was like you know what i mean like they were reselling the same game but it had all the balance changes yeah street fighter 4 was a big culprit of that right yeah street fighter 4 was it uh ultra and then there was another one right so you had street fighter 4 you had super street fighter 4 street fighter 4 arcade edition arcade edition 2012 and Mm -hmm. then ultra street fighter 4 yeah, and that was grimy. That was basically four games, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's that's terrible, man. <laughs> that's pretty bad, man. But I do like I, I just wonder what well, like what's dictating a lot of these prices. I don't know though, man. Even if I do know, and maybe if I did, I still just don't like it. <laughs> Even if I knew and understood it. But I do appreciate that Dems Fighting Her is getting a more patch. And I hope with Chanty's release, the game will be able to get more characters along the line. Because it would be dope to see. A lot more characters in a game like that. that that game that game deserves it yeah that game is super fun she looks really cool her stage is really cool it's like you're on a boat uh-huh. and yeah, uh, like yeah. a pirate ship and then the free stage that's coming is hidden waterfall that stage looks tight as well that's a really cool stage mm-hmm. so that's free for so everybody. they're getting two stages yeah so if you buy shanty her dlc package comes with her stage but if mm. you don't buy her then the free stage is hidden waterfall nice nice Mm. so yeah i'm excited for that so that'll be out on march 25th eventually if we get enough people in the discord who are interested in playing tfh i would like to run a tournament for this game one of these days but uh y'all are sleeping on ponies man why y'all don't want to play ponies man out here playing doodle ass games man come (laughs) on man come over here and play some ponies man (laughs) i know y'all rather play buggy ass (laughs) skullgirl Uh, hey, uh, right quick, man. I did want to say uh, I did re- I did feel some of the bugs. Some people even said that the game isn't like reading inputs and stuff like that. So, mm. yeah, it's it's pretty weird. Uh, I don't know why that's the case, but I don't know. All right. Well, uh, we'll just kind of go with these questions and we'll see where we're at uh, with time. And then we'll see what we'll have to roll back. So the first one here comes from Abu on Patreon. And he asks... What kind of single player content would you like to see developers implement in fighting games that have not been done before? Oh, and I don't know why, but something tells me you might like a game called Persona 4 Arena. <laughs> Love your podcast, and I hope you guys find even more success in the future. That was very nice of them. So I have a, I wrote this down before the podcast because I don't want to forget. So this is my example. So I want a legit challenge mode, and it technically has been done before. Guilty Gear. Uh, Axon Core has it in a way and some other games as well but I would like a challenge mode that like isn't just hey do these combos are on the screen like a challenge mode where you have to beat like a character or a boss version of that character like for example without jumping and then the Mm. boss character continues to jump on you or if like you're not allowed to uppercut and Mm. you know that it continually puts you in situations that are disadvantageous and you have to find a way to win or beat this character without using any meter or don't take a single hit or whatever it is like challenge modes that are actually interesting and thought provoking while you're playing instead of just brain numbing combos doing over and over you know like yeah challenge me like do something that's actually challenging (laughs) take the word challenge mode and challenge me actually (laughs) all right man yeah i understand that one I think Skullgirls Skull has something kind of similar to that where you're kind of like locked into certain things where you're supposed to use a certain character or you're supposed to do a certain thing and you can't do this and it locks you on. So there's some stuff like that. But definitely would appreciate something more consistent with uh, uh, a challenge mode that was actually worthwhile. I have a, I have another one. Why isn't there like more mini games, man? For like fighting games, man, mini games would be perfect. There's like 
there's some downtime. So what they like, like so you know how in um in Gilded Gear you could fish. Why mm-hmm. don't they make a legitimate fishing game? Why like what's the problem? It's just mini games. I've seen like JRPG devs put like a hundred hours into gameplay, and then it's like, oh, but you could spend a hundred plus more hours fishing. I'm like, yo, <laughs> like, <laughs> like why not throw in some mini games? I feel like the fighting game genre could be perfect because like you got good neck. If you got good net code, then it's like, all right. You can implement some multiplayer mini games, or you can even implement some single ones. It could be like fishing. It could be like I don't know checkers, something. It could be tic tac toe for goodness sake. Little thing. What if if, if it was like a, I don't know tic tac toe pick the stage, something silly like that, right? Mm-hmm. To make it oh you 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 beat me in tic tac toe, you get to pick the stage, or you beat me in tic tac toe, you get to pick the music, or little little mini games that could like just add some overall fluff to the game that would much need it like because outside of just versus mode arcade mode stuff like that why isn't there like some things that could just be in general kind of fun for you to play that isn't just fighting man i mean as stupid as that is to say i think it's not a bad idea because it's just so much room for that man like for a little mini game you could just toss in there and it's like oh well that that didn't cost much like tekken bowling yeah you know, that reminds me, I played Red Dead Redemption back in the day. And do you know how much time I spent uh, playing poker in Red Dead Redemption? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Here I am supposed to, like, catch bandits or whatever or do the main storyline. And I'm in this saloon playing poker <laughs> like a degenerate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll save the world later. Yeah. I'll play some poker. <laughs> like in, Dra- in Dragon Quest, like, lots, slots. And uh, you can play slots. You can play uh, poker. I think there's something else. And man, I'd be sitting on them slots, boy. Ooh, we, yeah. I love me some slots, man. You know what would be godlike is, mm. you know how like uh, the, the anime games have uh, like the arcade lobbies, like whatever, Persona or, or Exert or whatever, how mm. you, you can fish. Wouldn't it be cool if they put like a, like a table tennis and then like while you're waiting, just like play table tennis with somebody. That'd be kind of neat. Yeah, man, that'd be cool. Like, it, and it doesn't even, I feel like it's not, it wouldn't even be that hard to implement. It just gives the player more to do when he's like, there's, there's a lot of off time. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. in tournament matches, when you could be like, you're sitting in the lobby and you're waiting for somebody for a tournament online or something. And you are like, well, why don't I just play some table tennis with the wall? Or, you know what I mean? Like stuff like Or if the or lobby's full. Yeah, man. Like, dude. But they don't want to do stuff like that. It seems like they're, they're they're so innovative with the most boring things, but they're not making the overall like package fun. Mm-hmm. Like that's the thing. Right? Like focus so much on things to like enhance or enhance our experience, but little fun things like that makes it more fun. Yeah, I you talking about spending resources? I have a bit of a thought here, and let me know how. What do you think about this? I I don't like fighting game story modes. I think they're kind of a waste of time i personally <laughs> I, I don't care for the lore that much i think that story modes the way they're done now they're pretty whack usually it's a visual novel of some sorts with fighting games in between or, or fighting sequences in between the qtes are bad they're not inspiring mm-hmm. if there is a gimmick it's usually whack and i find the whole overall experience to just be rather boring if i i'm not saying fighting game shouldn't have a story mode or a narrative but if i ha- can have my choosing as far as and like what do you put in offline modes outside of the traditional verses and training and all those i would like to have a story mode just show me a movie man just show me like a bunch of cutscenes, and if i want to watch it i will and if i don't i won't and then give me uh, like an arcade mode I want arcade mode to be for the characters. Like if I finish arcade mode with Dragonov and, and Tekken, I want to see his ending. So I want to know more about this specific character. Like I don't care about Tekken's universe as a whole. I just want to know more about Bob or whatever. So that's how I would go about it as far as um, story modes. I would get rid of the whole inconsequential battles that you do while you're reading text or you're watching mm-hmm. cutscenes. Just either show me the movie or let me play. Like, don't do both because the mix, I think, is so... It's just bland, man. Mm-hmm. Damn, dude. I agree. I remember I played Blaze Blue story mode, and I was like, I hit the floor soon, man. I was like, <laughs> what is this? It's yeah. so long. And, yo, it, I, 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 I'm I, with you there, bro. Like, I don't really give a damn. You already know I don't give a crap about lore, man. I don't really care about that stuff at all. 
it's, it's like it's very hard for me to care about lore. I mean, like Persona did like a big ass uh, novel, and it's like, oh well, you would probably be interested in it if you know if you because it's JRPGs. But it's like, no man, I really don't care about that stuff, man. I want to get into the action, dude. That's why I play a fighting game. I don't play a fighting game for story, man. That's definitely not it. And I wish there was something more interesting and fun they could do than make some boring ass story and just like. Like let it roll on me, and then I just have to fight a, a set match. Like even Skullgirls does it. Like there's so many games that do it. Like you remember, you have you remember Street Fighter Five story mode? It's not even like an animation. Oh, it's just it's, it's a freaking like a piece of like it's an art like two two like four display like wallpapers and some words and text. And it's like yeah, man, it's terrible. It's it's so lazy. It's it's lazy. It's uninspiring. It's garbage. And I wish they got rid of it. And just let me play some some goddamn table tennis with my enemy. <laughs> yeah, <that'd laughs> I'm bowling or something like that. Something more fun, man. Because that, me fish. Like, I don't. Yeah, man. Let me fish, yo, man. I'll be real <laughs> with you, dude. Like fishing is my main mini game, dog. I could play a game and only want a fish. If there's a fish in fishing in it, I will <laughs> like JRPGs have it where you could play fishing, and I'm like, yo, I don't even give a damn about the game no more. I'm just gonna fish, man. I love fishing. I don't know what it is, but I love fishing in mini games and like it's that fun. could like it's fun as hell. Yeah, man. And it, it's so much more enjoyable to me than like just going through all of these boring cutscenes. Like, I mean, not cutscenes, just visual novel stuff. And it's like like and I'm I'm a I'm a story dude. I'm a JRPG mm-hmm. guy, but I hate lore. <laughs> like it's like well, fighting so it's game like, lore sucks, dude. Dude, boring. I'm it's uh, I don't give a crap about fighting game lore, man. Like all the characters are presented to me in a way that tells me I need to play them in a match to see what they're about. I'm not about to sit through uh, cutscenes and all this story mode. And I still give a crap about that stuff, man. I really don't. Yeah, dude. I, it's, it's not. It's not great. I, mm-hmm. I got two points though. One, since he did bring up Persona Four Arena, the one thing, even though I do think the story mode does overstay its welcome, I think it's too long especially in the second one. But the cool thing about Persona 4 Arena and Ultimax is the way they did it is that you're playing, you're you're living the same story through a different set of eyes. So it does allow you to see who the characters are through going the main, like by going through the main storyline. So that was cool because, for example, in Persona 4 Arena, if you're playing the story mode and you pick Elizabeth or if you play the story mode and you pick Labrys, you're technically playing towards the same goal, but their journey there is completely different. So the writing was pretty well done there. So I, I will give them uh, some props, even though I did think that it did. It was a little too long reading all that, but it was done fairly decent. The other part about fishing, I do think fishing is super fun. And I, I think it's because you don't know what you're going to get. In, in Rev 2, man, you could fish. I fished out Raven, man. <laughs> like the character. <laughs> Which was really dope. I was like, oh, hell yeah, man. Because, like, I'd almost play, like, sometimes I like to play Rev. Because what I like about Rev, too, is that you could just play a lot of matches. And then it's like, oh, I got a lot of fight money or whatever. I could go fish. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, you could just play some fishing minigame. And it's it's fun. But it's not the greatest minigame because there's no skill involved. Like, you just press the button and then you just, all oh, it shakes. And the, I wish it was more of an f- actual game. Man. All right. Uh, Zio on Patreon asks... We have many different kinds of fighting games. 3D, 2D, Air Dashers, footsie base, platform. What is the second best of each one? So he got inspired to ask this question because he watched this video of how there's like these people in hell and they get like the worst or like like the second worst thing of every single thing that they want. So like they want to watch movies and instead of like Lord of the Rings or whatever, he's like, I don't have that. But I have Peter Jackson or something. <laughs> so they were saying that it was like, wow, actually having the second best thing is worse than having the worst thing. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's like there's so much missed potential. Yeah, because you were so close to getting the best of it. So I guess the idea of this exercise is we have to identify which one is the best. I guess obviously it will be subjective because it's the best in our eyes. And then mm. name the one that's right underneath that. Yeah. So 3D, okay. I was thinking about this before we started. I think my personal best would be Tekken 6. So yeah. I would say maybe the second best 
as much as I don't like to admit it, it, it could be Tekken 7, to be honest. Just the, the value. Oh, yeah, yeah cool. the value that you get with Tekken 7 in a modern fighting game. It could be the second best Tekken. Yeah, I get that. I don't really... I've never really played much. See, I've only played, like, one 3D fighter, really. I can only say I've gotten two in the when I was seven. But then I haven't played any of the others, and I would almost even say that would be my second best. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's not my best, so I'll put it there. <laughs> uh, 2D... This one's a little harder because there's a lot to pick from. I guess we would have to go with like our favorite 2D game. I don't know. I feel I can't even. I don't feel like I can say Skullgirls is my my best 2D game. <laughs> yeah. As, as wild as that is to say, I've fallen in love and out of it so much times, that, and now like with what they did, I really can't say it anymore. You know what? We'll put Skullgirls because I don't know what the best is yet. So I'll, okay. just, <laughs> I'll just put Skullgirls. I did it. I'm going to say King of Fighters 13 is my favorite 2D. Yeah. So the second best would be Street Fighter Alpha 2. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Footsie based. This one's a little different because I, to be honest, I don't play a lot of footsie based games like uh, whether it's Samurai Showdown or the super old Street Fighters. And I, I don't know. I guess they're they're technically footsie based, but like Third Strike, for example, like, yeah, it's footsies, but it's also hella rushdown. So... Yeah, I think it's still fine to say it under that footsie-based term, I guess. I'll say Third Strike then, because I think the best is probably going to be Sam Show. Yeah, Third Strike, yeah, okay. For me, um, see, I haven't really, like, I wanted to dabble in more footsie-based games, to be honest, but I just don't. And I don't I don't think outside of my, see, I haven't even found my favorite th- um, footsie-based fighting game now that I think about it, man. You ever played the to- actual game footsies? Nah, actually I have not, but I have seen plenty of footage of it. But um, yeah, I don't know what I would say as the second best. Maybe, um, I don't want to say Ultra Street Fighter 4, but I guess I'll put it there because I don't really have a best, but I'd say Ultra Street Fighter there 4 is like right around that area. Mm-hmm. That'd be a good pick. I guess lastly, I, f- I, I missed this one, Air Dashers. Yeah, yeah. So come on. Come on, Pringle. You know what I'm going to <laughs> The best one, Persona 4 Ultimate. I'll put Rev 2 right there. You're going to put Rev 2 as number two? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll put Plus R as number two. Yeah, it works. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then he, he added platform. I can't even answer this question. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I got one. Uh, for me, it would be, I think my favorite platform fighter is probably Rivals of Aether. Who? That I would say. Yeah, that game is pretty great i think i'd say it's it's basically like all the competitive stuff i'd want in a game i wanted to try it and expensive yeah is it yeah yeah it's pretty i think you might like it but it's more it's not like weird like brawlhalla but Mm -hmm. it's like more more aggressive i would say it's a lot more aggressive and stuff um it's like 40 bucks damn yeah i didn't buy that for no (laughs) hell no Nah, I would I'd get that game for ten or fifteen at max. That's what I mean. It had um, it been ten, I would have got it. Yeah, man. <laughs> and I <laughs> and the second best, I'd probably put like Smash Four for Wii U. Dang, no love for PlayStation All Stars. I see how it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, boy. Let me hit you with my parappa the rapper. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, see my sack, boy. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Uh, little Joe Podfox on YouTube asks. Do you guys have any favorite reoccurring character aesthetics? For example, Gun Girl wearing a beret, Jill Valentine and Noel, Karate Guy, Ryu and Ryo, or Ninja, Chip and Ibuki, or even an Edgelord, Ragna and Iori. You're a, since you're a function guy, I don't think you probably have a reoccurring aesthetic that you oh, well, go to. I kind of do. Oh. Uh, boxers. Boxers, Ooh. definitely. Yeah, I wish they were like more in the vein of Akihiko and not mm-hmm. in the vein of, of Steve though. In Tekken Seven, like I like Steve, but he's like Mayweather. You know what I mean? He's like yeah. the elegant. I want Akihiko to gross in your face, like you know. I want that mother frigga that gets in in there. Mm-hmm. That's what I want. Do you like Nelson from KOF? Uh, who is that? I don't know who that is. Nelson see. is the boxer. He's he's tight. I definitely like it. Oh, I think I've seen him before. He looked kind of odd, but he's like the. Uh, He's the pugilist thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the, <laughs> the, the, the 90s pugilist over here, man. I think he's kind of cool. I like his fighting style. Yeah, I, I like the I like those type of uh I like the boxer. I don't I don't see it too often where I like it. Like for instance, I don't like Balrog. I like Dudley a little bit more, but I don't like, really like Balrog that much. Mm-hmm. But I think in the I think the only one I'd say probably is Akihiko's. 
Yeah, Akiko's tight. He's really cool. Damn, man. This is really dope. Okay, Rag on Discord asks, if a sequel to an anime fighting game, for example, Blaze Blue, Guilty Gear, Under Night, Persona 4 Arena, any of them, is complete garbage, do you think the community would still jump on board, or will they give it the melee treatment and stay back on the older one? This uh, kind of correlates to what Jam asked at the top of the show as far as if there's... Uh, almost like a, a bias, a preconceived bias because of people that they, they like the property, so they'll stick with it no matter what. This one has more to do with like iteration, so I don't think so because we've seen examples of it already. Mm. And BB Tag came out, right? That's technically yeah. the latest Blaze Blue game, even though it's a versus title, but it has Blaze Blue in front of the name. It came out, it did its thing. People saw those like, oh, well, BB Tag is. Not what I thought BB Tag was going to be. Then you saw a lot of people go back to Central Fiction because yeah. it wasn't their game. I, I can't really speak for Exert so much. I wonder how many people stayed with Plus R before the rollback or if they just went on to play other things. But uh, for sure, you've seen that in the scene is because these fighting games are so small, anime fighting games specifically, they can't afford really to unless you're in a discord community and you can play your friends you have to either play the game that you don't like but is being spoken about and it's relevant in the current time that you're playing it or you jump ship and you go find a different game to play if you don't want to go regress and go back to a previous version because the odds there that the community is non-existent anymore because everybody's moving on yeah i don't think if something's complete garbage i think those are your only options with some of these anime games Dude, I, I don't, I'd almost also say that, man. I'll be real with you, man. I think people will just jump ship to the new thing, man. That's, mm -hmm. I feel like that's just the case, man. I mean, like, uh, Blaze, I mean, think about all the Blaze Blues. They, you know, one drops, they drop the next one. It don't even matter how good the next one is. They just drop it. Guilty Gear, everyone's going to drop Rev 2, man. Maybe some people will play Rev 2, but they're going to drop it for Strive for a fact, man. Yeah. Probably. Neo, perfect, perfect example of a Neo. Everyone just, uh, who cares? And then they just went to the new unique player. You know what I'm saying? P4 Arena. I mean, if we would have had Shadows, I mean, I mean, my bad. 2.0. <laughs> we would have all just went to 2.0 with mm -hmm. all the busted ass Shadow characters that makes it like I I watched some. I was watching some yesterday, and I was like, dude, Shadow Shadow characters are busted, man. Yeah. Shadow burst got like, and that's what we would have had to play through mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's. I don't know what it is, but like I feel like with the case of melee. That doesn't happen too often. Like people don't go back. They don't stay back. They usually go forward. I think what happened with Melee is the fact that like Brawl was just so bad to the point where you couldn't really even play it competitively that people just didn't really want to mess with it because Melee was super different in the case, especially in the vein of like Brawl and Melee. But like, I wish that that kind of happened, but things also like bad netcode doesn't help. So it's like, I might as well just jump to a newer game, even if the netcode is garbage. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. like, I really think that people just, even if the net, because it also happened with, like, Street Fighter. Street Fighter 4 is a better game, I'd say. Ultra is a much better game. Even the netcode is better, I think. I feel like it's Yeah, better. I think so, too. <laughs> yeah. So, so like, that one, I feel like that's more skill-based and more much better, but everybody still went to 5, and everybody's playing 5. Like, they got tired of 4, so they're going to play 5 now. So it's like no matter what you do, like we just don't have – it's same thing with Mortal Kombat, same thing with uh, a lot of games, I feel. We just don't have that like, yo, I'm going to stay with this other – this last game because it's 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 my game. That just doesn't happen so much. People would still be playing uh, – people – I mean, if Marvel versus Capcom, any of those had like decent netcode uh, that wasn't MVCI, and if it was three, people would never go back to Marvel's Capcom too. There would be mm -hmm. no reason. Yeah, netcode is the only thing that could be the saving grace for some of these older games. Mm -hmm. But if if they have already smaller communities and bad netcode, there's it's going to be really tough to um, mm -hmm. to save them. You know what would be really interesting is that if you gave people the option, if let's say if they decided to put a rollback mm -hmm. in a Rev 2, for example, prior mm -hmm. to June 11th, I wonder how much that will sway people to stay with rev 2 now that it has you know good cool. netcode and then you also have plus r there if you need it mm -hmm. and and strive on all the same platform right if it's all on steam uh with rollback then you give you're giving people a legit option to be like you can play guilty gear 
you have three versions here. They all have fantastic net code. Now mm -hmm. it's up to you to pick which one you're more interested in. But if it's only in between plus R, which is a 20 year old game or strive, which would be a current game. I think a lot of people would just decide to stick with uh, strive because there's more likely to have yeah. more people playing it. And then the legacy skill won't be as bad to climb up. Right. Mm -hmm. Because plus R would be an uphill climb at this point. Cause if you are playing plus R, you're probably really good or you're just learning. It's probably going to be hard to find people in between. So you might yeah. as well, you know, get on the, on the new thing and learn with everybody else. All right. Uh, we'll do this question and then we'll wrap up. So cold chaos 64 Ray. I like this question. He asks on YouTube, how do you guys would feel if fighting games let you player search for specific characters online maybe based off of an R code or something. So it's easier to grind matchups across different players of, of the same character. So you wouldn't have to go to like Discord or forums or something of that nature. I think that would be kind of cool if you could just search for, if let's say if I just want to lab the uh, whatever, the Ramlethal matchup, because I, I'm losing a lot to Ramlethal. So I, I go into player match, I type in R code Ramlethal only, it searches, and then I know that the person I'm about to play is going to play Ramblethal, so I can lab that match. That'd be godlike if you could do it in a kind of like a database or a library of, of replays. Mm -hmm. um, I think, actually, so I think um, I think Rev2 can let you, well, maybe not Rev2, but I know Street Fighter V lets you, like, if you click on someone, if you find their character, like you can find the, the person's name and find it in the uh, whatever the hell that thing is called, and you could find all their matches. You can find a lot of well, not all of them, but you can find plenty of previous matches they've had, and you could replay them. Oh but yeah, I think, the CFN is really good about that. Yeah, exactly the CFN. Yeah, so I think actually a a general library or database would be pretty amazing because that would also give players like, man, I want to see someone who plays my character but better, and you don't have to go online for matches. That'd be really dope because. Like it, it would be in the game. It would be accessible. It would be quick. It would be easy, and it's too innovative. So stop thinking about it. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Although speaking of innovation, did you see that replay functionality that they put in Plus R? What? Like, okay, so I have this. I don't know what it is, but go ahead, tell me. So basically, you can save a replay of you playing mm -hmm. against somebody online, and then when you play back that replay you can take control of your character at any point and that's simulate good, yeah. yeah that's so cool because now you can figure out it's like okay i held this mix up let me find out if there's a gap in here if i can do anything so now i know in the match so you can just continuously simulate that situation and figure out punishes figure out whatever you can do and it's uh it's so cool like yeah that's got like right there and it's funny coming out of an old game so like Cause I had that I thought I was thinking, is that because I only read like I forgot what it's called, but uh, I read that and I was like, is wouldn't it be dope? And I, in my head, I just read that and I was like, wouldn't it be dope if you could like take control of yourself, but like yourself in the match? But then I'm like, mm -hmm. wouldn't that be really hard to implement? Because like it, it like the character would be doing all of these, like the opponent you're fighting would do all of these already pre predetermined things that it's supposed to do. Would that be hard to implement? But I guess not if somebody managed to do it. Yeah. So. Because the replay will show everything, like you said, it's or it, mm -hmm. it already did everything against your actions during the actual match when it was recorded. Mm -hmm. I think you can only simulate a short period of time and mm -hmm. within the match to simulate like a certain scenario. So, yeah. which is, I think that's more than enough. If oh yeah, maybe to a, a certain point, you could get to a point you could simulate the whole goddamn match. <laughs> yeah, it's uh. It's such a cool resource and it makes labbing so much easier, man. Like yeah, man. instead of having to know what the other person is doing and then record their actions and then trying to figure out, you just save the replay and you simulate it right there and then. It's it's really cool. That's freaking smart, man. See, it's it, I see, man. You know what the problem is, man? These guys are not watching our podcast, man. <laughs> <laughs> These devs don't watch our podcast because we got this is nothing but jewels over here, man. Gems of information and knowledge that they can get from <laughs> the community, but they don't listen to the community or something. They only listen to the community when it's about their game. Now, now we gotta we gotta open we gotta open up our mind, yo. We gotta like we gotta think about some stuff outside of stuff. That's funny, but uh, uh, one 
one little note here before we get out of here. So uh, I'm not sure what's going on next week because technically I was supposed to get notice for my new job this week. Mm-hmm. I got radio silence. So uh, I don't know what okay. happened. I'm waiting. We'll play it by ear. I'll, I'll keep everybody updated as far as what's going on. I'm still trying to figure out what's going on. So uh, once I know, I'll let everybody else know. So that's kind of what's happening at this moment but uh outside of that i appreciate everybody for listening to episode 24 of fgc hollywood a fighting and podcast uh and yeah my name is max pleister my co-host is pringle the one and we will see you guys maybe next week <laughs> <laughs> take care y'all yeah. peace, peace.